Okay. Whew. Oh, is this thing on? Okay. What is <laughs> what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, Chief. <laughs> Hi, Chief. How are you feeling? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we can't even talk. <laughs> well, you, you, you want to know how I'm feeling? How are you feeling? Oh, I bet I know. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Oh, you right. got to go faster than that. Oh, you gotta yeah. All do... right. All right. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> so I'm um, super excited about today's guest today. Um, and our exchange family is really excited. I've, I've gotten like a ton of messages and, and text messages, especially from the Texans out there, man. Those those folks from Texas, man, they, they love their home state heroes. So uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Absolutely, Chief. Today's guest is a beloved star of the big screen and the small screen. He's an Academy Award-winning actor known for Dallas Buyers Club, Dazed and Confused, A Time to Kill, Wolf of Wall Street, and a host of other films, as well as the critically acclaimed TV crime drama, True Detective. He's also a professor of practice at the University of Texas at Austin. His memoir, Green Lights, just hit the shelves to rave reviews. Please help us welcome Matthew McConaughey. Hey! Thank y'all for having me. I liked all that. All those introductions were great. I was saying that, you know, I didn't get to say it to Julie right before she came on. She goes, she goes, I'm nervous. And I was about to say, one of the great tricks I've learned in going in before I'm doing things nervous, a big scene or something like that, is to do just that, but say it out loud. Woo! Oh, I'm nervous. It kind of pops the bubble and lets you go, okay, all right. Now that I said it out loud, I'm not as nervous. But hey, everybody, Chief, uh, Leah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and normally uh, when she's nervous, I do something goofy like I normally do, and then she's fine after that, so. <laughs> awesome. Well, Matthew, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And just a real quick housekeeping thing for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for Matthew and leave your love in the comments too. We'll be reading it live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, why not? We have a lot of great guests just like Matthew lined up. Awesome, awesome. So Matthew, man, it's truly, truly an honor to have you join us today. Uh, we're super thrilled that you're gonna uh, give us a little bit of your time to boost morale for the military viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us where you're joining us from today? Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, it had to be. <laughs> Austin, Texas. <laughs> Texas. Hey, so we're right down the road. We're in Dallas, Texas, so. Okay, hey, howdy. Just yes. wave up north. <laughs> hey, hey, down there in Austin. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, Matthew, how have you been during the pandemic and what's been life like, what has life been like for you and your family? Well, relatively, we've been pretty well. And, 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 I, and I say relatively because, look, I understand, you know, I'm in a position to have my pantry full. Like a lot of people out there are not able to have the pantry full. And um, so we were able to go get my 88 year old mother from her retirement community and bring her to our house. Um, she was gonna maybe move in with us, you know, eight years from now, 96 or so, but we got her in early. Um, the, 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 we've had to, you know, form new structure and rituals around the house with the kids virtually schooling, because if you don't have the structure and the rituals, all of a sudden it feels like every day is Saturday and it's chaos and stuff's all Absolutely. over the place. You're like, we gotta get put some reins on this thing. We gotta get control of this thing. So we got our rhythms down now. Um, having more meals together, spending more time in the kitchen, I'd say petting the dogs a little bit longer than we used to, trying to find the, the accents or the assets that we can in the time. One of them being my grandmother, my mother, my kid's grandma. They're together every single day now for seven months. That wouldn't have happened. Um, you know, it's a time where everyone's having to be stripped down to certain necessities. Uh, it's at least awkward and disruptive for everybody and tragic for some others. Um, but, um, we will see, I do believe as I write about in the book that we, we will have a chance to look back at this year somewhere in the future and go, Oh, there was a green light in that hardship that we had. Excellent. That, that, that's great advice. Great words. Um, you know, taking time to enjoy the things while we are slowing down a bit. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, Matthew, we know that you have a big heart for our nation's military. In fact, in October 2014, you hosted a special screening of Interstellar for the military community at the Exchanges Theater in Fort Hood. The line was out the door to see you. So today we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, and even Space Force personnel watching live right now from all over the world. And with the holidays approaching um, after a particularly trying year, are there any words of encouragement to share with our nation's heroes? Yeah. Uh, one, let's start with the simple one that is, is, is never worth taking for granted. Thank you. Um, you know, gratitude's, gratitude's more than a, a nicety. Uh, it actually is a, a real survival uh, technique and understanding survival. And the more we're thankful for in our lives, I believe the more we will create more things to be thankful for in our lives. So thank you. Um, you know, in this year and, you know, so many of you deep put all around the world, you know, here come the holidays, uh, coming back on the holidays is not going to be like, like it, like it normally is, et cetera, for, for, for many of us. Um, we have to hope never goes out of style. We have to, we have to know that realize is, is trying as it can get this is trying as things can get this to shall pass it's going to pass so when we understand and we can really shake hands with the fact that there is a light at the end of the uh, tunnel or tunnel or a a green light at the end of the red light that that can help keep us going um you know, you know um I, i've tried to practice yeah and i'm sure many of y'all know this that 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 mental trick of uh, um thinking that it's going to be harder for maybe longer than it's actually going to be because Sometimes when we think, oh, maybe it's over tomorrow, or maybe it's over tomorrow, and it's not. Oh, and then the next day, maybe it's over tomorrow, and it's not. We, we waste 30% of our energy on anticipation. It's called, I call it 30% of anticip anticipation, anticipation fatigue. So as much as you can, try and project that it's going to go on longer. So when they do tap us on the shoulder and say, freely engage again, yeah. we will go, oh, I could have kept going. You know what I mean? Um, and so we got to stay in the process of going through this, having hope and knowing that it's going to end at the same time, I'm finding every little thing we can to be gracious for that we do still have to celebrate in our lives, knowing that we will have more when we're free to roam again as we are. I mean, look, everyone out there, you all usually get called into action when there is a yellow or a red light. All right? You're getting called when it's not great news. You know what I mean? But it's to go preserve a green light or to have those yellow and reds to, to help to, to handle the situation so that they can then eventually turn green, which they will and do do in our lives. Um, so I say just look, have patience, you've got endurance, keep the resilience up, uh, keep the hope up and keep trying to find things in your life of gratitude. It's great for the sanity, it's great for the spirit. And thank you. Absolutely. And uh, you know, that, that to me, that sounds like uh, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And yeah. so just you know, pre preparing for that, for that, uh, and and I know we're all waiting for everybody to tap us on the shoulder and be like, hey, okay, it's time. It's coming. So, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But thank you for those encouraging words. And so let's shift gears into uh, and let's talk about green lights. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 you, you keep holding up the stoplight, and so that that's it. And Julie's got her copy of her back there too. She, she, she's waiting on you. Um, so green lights is available at uh our. Our, your local exchange or your or shopmyexchange.com. And so we just uh, wanted to ask why a memoir and why now? And uh, what what is the reception that the book is getting mean to you? So I've been keeping journals for 36 years. So, so you know, when I first started keeping a journal, I was 14 years old. I was keeping a journal, writing in a diary like most teenagers do. Why did Gretchen break up with me? You know, why do I have these pimples on my face? You know, all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but then I continued to keep a journal and noticed that it was also important for me to keep a journal and keep writing down things that were going on in my life when things were going well. Because we're so often taught to dissect failure or we go to the pen or we go to a friend when we're having a problem. Oh, we need to, be, we need to make sure that we go to the pen and paper or go to a friend and dissect success, 
dissect when we are on our frequency, when things are rolling, when our relationships are healthy, when we, we are catching green lights. Dissect that because there's a science to satisfaction. And if at least when you get in a rut again, which we all do, you, I found that I was able to look back and go, what was I doing back there when I was rolling? Mm -hmm. And I look at my habits. Oh, who was I hanging out with? What time was I going to sleep? What was I drinking? And what places were I, was I going? And I'll see, oh, you hadn't been doing some of these habits that you were doing when you were on frequency, when you were catching green lights. And it's helped me recalibrate to get back on track at times where I was off track. Um, why now the book? I mean, I've been daring to go write, write a book for the last past 15 years, didn't have the courage to do it. Said, oh man, I don't want to look back over 50 years of my life. Hell, I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be ashamed. I'm going to see times where I was an arrogant little SOB and go, who the heck did I think I was? And I look back at my diaries and I'm going to ready to write this book. And yeah, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. And I saw times in my life where I was an arrogant little SOB that I was like, oh, geez, oh man. But also many of the times where I thought I'd be embarrassed, I ended up laughing at myself. I also saw many times where I thought I'd be ashamed and ended up going, nah, I forgive you for that. Or I already forgave you for that. I also saw times where I was that arrogant little SOB, but said, you know what? Because you were a little arrogant Mr. Know-it-all at that time, you at least had, that gave you the courage to put yourself in a position to get humbled. <laughs> Absolutely. So I found some value in even those times where I was awkwardly arrogant. Um, so, so it was time, maybe it was coming across 50. I'm 51 years uh, old right now. It was coming near 50. Maybe it was like, let's get the courage to look back at your last 50 years and and kind of dissect it, see how you done it, see how you did, and see if there's some things in there that are worth sharing for some with some other people that maybe they can see themselves in the life that I've lived. Which that's been the funnest thing about the success of the book, talking to people about it, what people are getting from the book is seeing how it translates to them. Um, yeah, these are my personal stories, but people are going, oh, I've seen myself, I see the human experience that I've had through stories that you're sharing. I see a lesson learned. I see an approach. I see a tool for how to handle a crisis um i see a tool for how to handle success even sometimes through the book so that's that's been my greatest sort of joy is seeing how it translates to people that is uh, so great yeah that's oh go ahead chief what were you gonna say no no I, I, I was gonna ask him you know and i totally agree with you as far as highlighting your success or or, or acknowledging your success because we all would like to kind of go into it when we're, we're going through it but i just want to know you say you're 51 years old like what What's the secret? Is it like cocoa butter or what? Like we just switch. It's oil and with, mink, isn't it? it? That's what it is. <laughs> it ain't oil and mink. You read. That. <laughs> you want to laugh at the expense of Matthew McConaughey? Read the oil and mink story in Greenland. It's oh my, my favorite. <laughs> oil and mink. Okay, so that that's the secret. That's where we're getting the, the fountain of youth from, right? No, no, that's the one that 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 would have de that would almost derailed me. Oh man, no, I mean. Look, I, uh, I try to, I don't, I try to stress about the right things. I think, I, I think I've been fortunate and tried to practice in my life having a long view and having a long view. What I mean is it helps you disseminate in, the, in a world we live in of such immediate gratification or, uh, you know, in a world in social media where we send something out in the world and the rest of our day, what our mood is depends on how many people, what their comments are. If they come back, well, we all love it. We have a great day. If they come back, oh, you suck or that I hate it. We have a bad day. Oh man, hang on a minute. That's too. That's not the way to get a sense of identity and a sense of our own satisfaction. Um, so having a long view of just going, it helps us realize what matters and what doesn't. Um, I have you know some non-negotiable things in my life that even in my, when I'm confused, I know that if it's about family or my children or my wife no that's i'm protecting that no 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 i'm gonna do i got i gotta keep those two gardens i gotta keep those fertile you know i gotta keep those cultivating those i gotta good i gotta work life's a verb architecture's a verb it takes constant maintenance and if we maintain it um that's part of what leads us to the delayed gratification of having that long view because you know how it is you put something off we procrastinate taking care of ourselves we procrastinate taking care of our relationship with our spouse to procrastinate being the best father we can be or being responsible at our job it's gonna catch up 
Yeah. It's gonna, we're gonna get to a point where, and so if you put in the daily work, I've found that you don't, you, you eliminate a lot of major crises later in life. And we can be responsible for engineering green lights in our future. By the choices we make today, we can tee ourselves up for more freedom tomorrow by the choices we make. If we just have a little bit longer view and say, hey, let me be cool to my future self. Let's start with a simple one, very simple one. Put your coffee in your coffee filter in the coffee pot the night before. So when you wake up in the morning, all you got to do is go, <laughs> boop, and you go, <laughs> I was cool to my future self last night. You know, so they can come, they can come in many forms. Great. And congratulations on the success of green lights. I, I loved it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, green lights, it has lessons for all Americans, whether military members or civilians, about changing course when needed to succeed. And that learning to be resilient, it's so critical, especially for our troops who have to stay mission ready. So how do you, what's your advice, your some kind of, maybe some catch all advice for catching the green lights in your life? Well, you know, it, it's a balance between these two scenarios that I'm about to share with you as far as I can see it. So resilience for me has been one of my top, maybe top two assets for helping me become who I am and, and hopefully will become. And I've been taught through life, you fall, you step in the pothole, you trip, you get up, you dust yourself off, you keep going. Incredible value in that. At the same time, we have to realize that if we keep stepping in the same damn pothole and keep hopping up and brushing ourselves up and running, we are going to become repeat offenders. We're going to keep stepping in the pothole. So sometimes we have to step up and right before we dust ourselves off, actually have a look back at the pothole and go, why do I keep stepping in that damn thing? And take a little reflection. That's creating, that's engineering a yellow light by, on our, by, by ourself, self-determining. Now's the time I need a yellow light. I keep stepping in, in the same pothole. And I keep having to get up and dust myself off. So let me look back at that pothole, understand why I'm stepping it. So next time I'm running around the racetrack, I come to that pothole, I jump it, sidestep it, or take another path, and I don't keep stepping in the same one. Um, so it's a balance between absolute resilience and endurance and getting up again. Trust me, I've gotten a lot in my life from out hustling my competition. And by knocking on that door one more time than my competition would and finally getting the answer I wanted on the other side of it. At the same time, um, you know, I think it's very important to practice, well, if I keep trying this out and it, I'm not getting the result I want, maybe I need to reapproach it. And that's what I mean by maybe I need to stop and look back and not just dust myself off and do the same thing again. I actually look back and go, how can I do it differently? How can I look at this crisis in my life differently? How can I, how can I go about it so I don't have to keep stepping in the same damn pothole? And trust me, you know, we all know it. You can't get rid of all the potholes. It's just when you just when you learn how to sidestep one, there's another one coming from somewhere else up the Absolutely. road. Absolutely. Yes, sir. For sure. And then you talk about recognizing when a no might actually be yes. This can be hard. Um, we all have a natural inclination to want to hear yes. So tell us about a time. Can you tell us about a time when hearing a no worked out better for you? Sure. Um, well, Biggie is about, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was, uh, I've been in many successful romantic comedies. I love doing the romantic comedies. They paid me well. I was the rom-com. I was the go-to rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing it. But I also noticed that I had become so known as the rom-com shirtless on the beach guy. And mind you, I always like to say this. Uh, yes, those rom-coms paid for those houses on the beach that I rented that I ran shirtless on. Yes, fact. <laughs> that was me. And, and I, told, and I told our viewers that you, 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 you were going to have a shirt on for this interview, so that's, that's good So far, so far, right? <laughs> well, tell us more. What I, noticed, what I noticed was that my success in the rom-coms made the industry say, well, we're not even going to consider you for these drama, dramatic roles you want to do. I would even argue that the audience, American audience was like, no, nah, we don't want to see him. We're not going to see him kind of hey, in the drama. We like him in the wrong. He's the wrong. He's shirtless on the beach. Rom-com guy. Well, 
because those roles were not being offered to me, no matter how much pay cut I would take, I said, if I can't do what I want to do, I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing. So I said, no to rom-coms. That's all that came in as soon as I said no. I said, I'm not doing rom-coms. For six months, nothing but rom-coms came in. I said no to every single one of them. Then all of a sudden, nothing came in. 14 more months, a total of 20 months, no work. Man, I thought I'd taken a one-way mm -hmm. ticket from Hollywood, didn't know if I was ever going to go back and work in it again. Mm -hmm. But I said, no, no, I, if I can't do what I want, I'm not going to go back and do what I've been doing. Well, 20 months later, after being gone, forgotten, not in a rom-com, not seeing me shirtless on a beach, in a tabloid or anywhere else, all of a sudden, by being forgotten, unbranding, I became a new good idea for the dramatic roles that I was looking for. So I unbranded to rebrand. I had a 20 month period of unbranding. And sometimes, you know, getting what we want is not necessarily about going straight to it either. Maybe we don't know what we want or know who we are, but by process of elimination, getting rid of what we're not or don't want to be will mathematically lay in front of us higher percentages of getting what we want and who we are. So that was a serious time in my life where saying no and sticking, making the sacrifice to not do what I had been pigeonholed into doing and was known as in rom-com by not doing those, by saying no to those, opened up the yeses and the green lights that I was looking for 20 months later. That, is, that, was, that was an amazing story. And, uh, and I, I know um, it, it, sometimes it's tough to say no. Um, it's, it's very tough to say no, but uh, all the no's that I've gotten in my life have, have seemed to uh, help me along the journey and the path that I have had in my life. So I tell, I tell my airmen, and I tell my, my uh, service members that, uh, you know, an opportunity that closes or, or a no that you get, it leads to this yes, five, 10 years from now. And so- uh, That's part of that long view again, yeah. you know? That's part of that long view. Know that that yes, sometimes that yes isn't coming tomorrow. Sometimes it's not coming next week. Sometimes it's not coming next year. I would argue to say sometimes we aren't going to realize what that yes is until we're on our deathbed. I would also argue that maybe we don't realize the, the, the green lights from our red and yellow lights in life in this lifetime, that maybe our great grandkids will realize it. You know, my father moved on from this life in 1992. That's a major red light for me. But boy, have I seen green light assets from him moving on how it made me man up and be help try and become the man I need to be because I couldn't, I didn't have him there to rely on anymore. You know, now that doesn't deny the red light crisis and hardship that I had in him in his leaving this life, but the green light assets of him moving on. I don't know that I'd be sitting here talking to you today with the life I have, have, if I did not, if I had lost, if I hadn't, if he'd still been alive, I don't know. You know, would I, would I have really taken the responsibility to be the man I want to be? Would I have had the courage to do so if I still had him to rely on to have my back? I don't know. Absolutely. Um, Matthew, so right now it seems like America can't get enough of you, especially given the success that Greenlights is enjoying. So what's ahead for you? Any new projects that you can talk to us about? I want to keep writing. Um, I, I, I've got ideas for, for, for a second book. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really got my feelers out for what position, what category, what place is the best and most useful place for me to lead in this big movie called life. Not the ones that we make in Hollywood, but the one where, you know, action was called when we were born and cuts called one time when we die. This one where there's one take and the camera's always rolling. What is my most useful place? to maybe give what can be tr is true for me and true for other people and the most amount of people at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. What is that, 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 that solid stepping stone to give people that we can all agree, no matter what your politics, no matter what church you went to, that we can all go step on that, that stone. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can go there. We can have that conversation without the condemnation. We can agree on that common denominator of values between us, no matter where we voted, or as I said, where we go to church, or the color of our skin, or the, or the sex we are. There's a, common, the, the, there's a common set of denominator of those values that I believe in, that I think my hunch is that we can all agree on. 
and reconnect our social contracts with each other again. Reconnect our understanding that we're responsibility for ourselves and each other. And those two do not have to be mutually exclusive. You know, so many times we say, well, you either selfish or you're selfless. Well, I don't think so. I think there's a place where you can be, you can do what's best for you and it's what's best for the most amount of people. Absolutely. I think there's a place where you can do what's best for the most amount of people and it's good, best for you. Those two can be this. They don't have to be this. Um, and so we've got building to do as a people. And I fully believe that, you know, you make a collective change by enough individuals making personal change. I want to pause just for a moment to turn to our live feed where you have viewers watching from all across the world. People are saying they love you. They love green lights. They love your message about resiliency. So we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines watching again from all over. And Marcy Couch has a question for you. She wants right. to know, Marcy wants to know what's your favorite ice cream? <laughs> Ooh, I had some salted caramel last night. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it is pretty upfront for me right now. Right, last night I was like, I don't know that I've had better ice cream than this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my new favorite now too. <laughs> Julie. Julie, come on now. Yeah. And also um I got a, a couple folks on my page that wanted me to send you a couple messages. Uh, Lisa Lisa Thrasher Stallard today's her birthday, and so she. I'm hoping you can wish her a happy happy birthday today. Yeah, Lisa, happy birthday, girl. Hope yeah. your trip around the sun was a good one. Hey, absolutely. And so uh, I got Angela Pinkney. She says hi from England. Uh, Ray Riley says hi. What up from uh, Japan? And uh, Gabby Haramio says hi from Phoenix. She lo and she loves your book. She sent me all these links to all these different uh, things that you've done, your organizations. So, so she absolutely loves. Outstanding. Outstanding. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Everybody out there. So, I, oh no, I, Leah, you, you got, you got something? No, Chief, I'm good. Oh, is it um, on me? Okay. Well, I know, I know you got a, a another, another engagement here soon. So uh, we, we're going to wrap it up, but uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, just know this, you know, you spending a little time with us just means the world so to all the service members across the world that are looking at you. Uh, like I said, you you got a big, huge uh, following. Uh, your Texans they they really they ride for you super super hard. So I, I it's it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Thank you for what you've done for us, and we wish you all the best and the happiest of holidays. Uh, best for twenty twenty one. Yeah, and y'all let's turn let's turn twenty one into a green light year, huh? And hang in there. Um, and uh, hope you have as good of holidays as you can. And we take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and let's uh, catch and create more green lights for ourselves and each other coming up. Because there's yes, room, sir. there's room for us all to catch them. There's room for us all. To catch <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right. And as a reminder, green lights is available on shopmyexchange.com and in your local exchange. And also, if you want to know more, go to greenlights.com. You can find out more info on it. But. Uh, Hope you enjoy it when you do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It. Thank you for writing it. Thank you for sharing your life with us. I like the audio book version. Oh cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> Which if you guys if you guys don't know, Matthew reads it. So check yeah, out that audio good. version. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, y'all have a good one. All right. Y'all too. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Matthew. Bye. Thank that you. Out. Bye. Right, be good. Be good.